Hello, this is Ali Kotami with SCS Engineers. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule and listening to this presentation. The subject of this presentation is double cased pipe pressure testing. In the landfill industry, uh, op uh, operators and the engineers and contractors use uh, non-perforated solid HDP pipes for many different uh, applications including leachate force main, condensate force main, or a smaller force main for uh, taking water out of the gas well to another force main to the storage tank. Uh, the integrity of these pipes is uh, of significant uh, importance because the pipes are put together in pipe segments and butt welded, butt welded together and the purpose is uh, of the pressure testing is to make sure that the pipes, the wells are intact and not leaking. The subject of this presentation is related to double cased pipes. Double cased pipes are normally used to prevent leaks from force main getting into the environment. So in a sense the main carrier which is the force main is placed inside the larger casing pipe that if a leak occurs from the force main the liquid will get inside the casing pipe not into the environment. And somewhere along the pipe there will be a detection chamber or a detection instrument to tell the operator whether there, is, whether there is a leak from the force main or not. A detection chamber could be a dry manhole connected to the casing pipe. If liquid comes out of the force main into the casing pipe, it can flow into the detection chamber and a regular monitoring of the detection chamber would tell the operator whether there is a leak from the force main or not. A detection instrument can be a valve or a pressure gauge on a sealed casing pipe, which means if you open the valve and there's liquid coming out of the casing pipe is an indication of a leak from the force main into the casing pipe that is being detected through the valve. Or if you read a pressure on the pressure gauge attached to a sealed casing pipe is an indication of a leak from the force main going into the detection and filling the casing pipe and pressurizing the casing pipe. Double casing pipes is up to the client. Many estates do not require a double cased pipe but clients may require double cased pipes depending where their site is normally sites that are located in in uh, large uh, metropolitan areas with uh, uh, a lot of uh, residents around the site and communities around the site whether commercial or residential which the site is very visible they may require a double cased force main to prevent any potential leak into the environment and causing uh, compliance issues. Pressure testing can be done in a few different ways. You can pressure test the force main before placing it inside the casing pipe and also pressure test the casing pipe before the force main goes inside the casing pipe. The second one is just is to pressure test the force main when it is outside the casing pipe and then pressure test the casing pipe after the force main goes inside the casing pipe. And the third way is to place the force main inside the casing pipe and pressure test either each pipe uh, while there is one inside the other. At the end it's up to the engineer to require pressure testing over the entire assembly of the leachate force main which may have double cased fittings in the form of elbows, T's, etc. 
if the engineer wants to make sure all the welding is done properly between large segments of pipes and also done in the connections to the fittings may require pressure testing out after the everything is put together in that case pressure testing will done will be done in the third method which the force main is inside the casing pipe before we get more into the pressure testing of the pipes i'd like to bring to your attention that hdp pipes are normally very strong with radially outward pressures and that's why we normally use hdp pipes as force main it can carry highly pressurized liquid inside them however the same pipe is not so strong when you apply an external pressure to the pipe meaning if you press the pipe from outside toward the inside radially inward pressures this external pressure may exist when you have double cased pipes and you want to pressurize the casing pipe while the inner pipe is empty non-pressurized you would be applying external pressure on the inner pipe and the pipe is not so strong and that could be a problem if you pressurize the casing pipe without pressurizing the inner pipe you're asking for a problem you should always pressurize the inner pipe and then pressurize the casing pipe for pressure testing if you do not pressurize the inner pipe you may end up collapsing the inner pipe without you knowing it without the cqa uh, entity knowing it without the contractor knowing it and the system completed system goes in service and the client will find problems with flow in the in the force main i normally specify the pressure difference between inner pipe and the casing pipe to be no greater than 5 psi doesn't matter which way whether the casing pipe pressure is higher than the inner pipe or vice versa uh, it it could be positive pressure difference or negative pressure depending which way you go as long as it's no greater than 5 psi i'm comfortable with it Now I'm going to show you this chart from Driscoll pipe manual which is related to external pressure on HDP pipes. At the top going from left to right you see the SDR value of the pipe going from 7 to 32 and a half. On the left side from top to bottom is the duration of the external pressure applied to the pipe. One day, one month, one year, 50 years and in the middle the numbers indicate the allowable external pressure applied to the pipe and they are presented in three different units and i'm going to concentrate on the numbers that are related to the psi for example let's let's discuss the column related to sdr 17. if you apply external pressure on the sdr 17 pipe for a period of one day that pressure should not be greater than 28 psi if you apply external pressure on the SDR 17 pipe for a period of one month the pressure should not be greater than 15 and the same token if for one year shouldn't be greater than 14 psi and for 50 years should not be greater than 13 psi as you see this pressure are much much smaller than the pressures that you can apply to the inside of the pipe which means the pipe is much stronger pressurized internally than pressurized externally for me to be on the safe side and to be conservative with these numbers I normally specify pressure difference between the casing pipe and the inner pipe no more than 5 psi which would cover me for majority of these SDR values with the exception of 32 and a half which is 4 which I rarely use 32 and a half but however if 32 and a half comes about 
five psi is very close to four psi and I feel safe with that number. Now, now a few pictures from a, a field experience. I'm putting this slide up to tell you that what not to do. In this case, as you see, the casing pipe is connected to a pressure gauge and the hose is connected to it to apply pressure to the casing pipe. However, the inner pipe is covered with duct tape and there's no way to pressurize the inner pipe. If you pressurize the casing pipe in a case like this, then you're in trouble because you may potentially cause collapse of the inner pipe without knowing it. So this is what not to do. This is a case that the contractor decided to install the inner pipe inside the casing pipe and then proceed with the pressure testing. At this stage, the contractor is preparing the inner pipe for uh, adding the assembly for pressure testing and apply the pressure to the inner pipe. Here the inner pipe has a valve on it and it's getting closer to the stage of doing pressure testing. There is a blind flange on the casing pipe that the inner pipe is passing through, so the casing pipe is sealed as well for pressure testing. Here as you see, the assembly for pressure testing the inner pipe is set. There's a galvanized pipe connected to the blind flange on the inner pipe. There is a pressure gauge on the casing pipe if you look closely. Uh, I'm sorry, the pressure gauge is connected to the galvanized pipe. And there is a hose connected to the galvanized pipes and then connected to a water source that uh, brings water into the inner pipe for pressure testing. This is the gauge on the galvanized pipe which shows the pressure inside the inner pipe to be around 80 psi. We normally require a pressure testing to be done about uh, one and a half times the operating pressure in the line when the line is placed in service. So in this case, it ended up to be around 80 psi or close to 80. And uh, we normally require a one hour duration with uh, no pressure drop. And uh, since we want to consider temperature effect, we normally uh, work with the contractor to pressurize the pipe the night before the pressure test is done. And we carry on with pressure testing early in the morning the next morning. When they come back uh, to the site the next morning, the first thing they do they readjust the pressure to make sure that all the expansion in the pipe is taken care of overnight under pressure. And we set the pressure at the specified pressure in the specification. And then we start the clock for one hour duration. And uh, our specification says zero pressure drop over one hour period. But it may vary from engineer to engineer from a specification to a specification. It's up to the project specifications. In this case, the contractor is uh, preparing the pipes uh, for the inner pipe pressure testing and the casing pipe pressure testing. The inner pipe is connected to a galvanized pipe with a pressure gauge on it and a valve. And the casing pipe right in the middle of the welding machine is connected to the galvanized pipe and there is a pressure gauge on the galvanized pipe and, and valves and the galvanized pipe at this, in this picture is connected to a hose. This is the assembly that I showed you in the previous uh, slide. Again, the inner pipe is connected to a galvanized pipe. There's a pressure gauge on the galvanized pipe with a valve. And then the casing pipe is also connected to a galvanized pipe with gauge and, and valves on it. This is the other end of the pipe. The casing pipe is connected to the galvanized pipe with a valve on it. The inner pipe has a valve on it. On this side, I don't need pressure gauges. This side, 
valves helps me to release air from the pipe while liquid is going inside the pipe for pressurizing the pipes from the other end and pressure gauges are located at the other end of the pipe here the the contractor is checking pressures on the lines both lines are pressurized because the reason I say that for uh, certainly because the gauge on the casing pipe shows a pressure on the pipe and I'm certain that the inner pipe is pressurized first because that's what you want to do you want to pressurize the inner pipe first then pressurize the uh, casing pipe this is the gauge on the casing pipe valves are also visible and there's some pressure uh, shown on the gauge this is a closer view of that gauge on the casing pipe is around 80 psi pressure on the casing pipe and this is the pressure gauge on the inner pipe which shows around 83 psi it is higher than the pressure on the casing pipe and the pressure difference is no more than 5 psi again like I said before the difference should not be more than 5 psi as is specified in the project specification the 5 psi could be either way uh, the inner pipe pressure could be higher than the casing pipe or it could be lower but no more than 5 psi difference and this is the end of the test uh, pressure testing was done and then they release water from both pipes as the, at the conclusion of the pressure testing a few recommendations always prepare pressure testing specifications and then specify an allowable pressure difference between the inner pipe and the casing pipe when it comes to the pressure testing of the casing pipes and also a specify monitoring procedure for the CQ party with that I conclude my presentation I thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule listening to this presentation if you have any questions regarding this uh, subject of this presentation don't hesitate to contact me via my email or my cell at 561-441-1473 Thanks again.